Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, I wasn't planning on making a video, to be honest. Um, I've been looking at this fun every single day. Um, there wasn't too much going on, so I, you know, I didn't want to make a video just for the sake of doing it. It seemed like a waste of everyone's time. Um, but with that being said, uh, one of or a few of um, few members in our communities. Um, mentioned that THTA actually have a had a, um, a declaration date yesterday, and I had no idea, <laughs> which I thought was funny because I have been tracking this fun every single day. Made a few videos about it, um, so I think that's the preface of this video. Um, video slash rant or maybe constructive criticism for SoFi. Um, so we'll talk about that and talk about this uh, distribution that I am honestly perplexed about. Um, so anyway, you guys know the ticker THTA, the SoFi Enhancing Come ETF. So what we usually go over, what I usually look at every day are the fun details, and this is as of December 14th, 2023, which is a Thursday. Today is Friday, the 15th of December. AUM, assets under management, a slight increase again, so the trend is you know still going higher. More people are uh, interested in this fund, so now we're sitting at $5.5 million uh, AUM. Shares outstanding, 275000 so... Um, you know, that's to be expected as the AUM goes up, so do shares outstanding. Uh, the NAV, we're sitting at $20.11, so not too much fluctuation with the NAV, um, but again, you know, this fund isn't very active. They're not making too many trades, so I wouldn't expect the NAV to um, vary, vary so much. All right, well, here's our top 10 holdings as of yesterday. Um, so I'm going to point out a few things that are, I mean, flat out incorrect. Um, so if you look here, the website still has listed the, the credit spread that expired last Friday. Um, so it's been a whole week and this is still not updated. The 12.8 um, put credit spreads are gone. They went kapoof. We got 100% of the premium. So I'm not sure where this is pulling from to generate this on the website, but it's incorrect. So that's my first, um, I don't even want to say complaint, but I guess constructive criticism that whomever is managing this website, um, you know, just try to keep it up to date. Uh, for people who are interested in this fund, potential investors to go to this website and your holdings are not even accurate. Um, not everybody's going to open the CSV like me, right? So, yeah. And just to make sure, um, you know, because maybe I thought maybe the CSV is outdated. Maybe the Excel is, is outdated and that's why this website is incorrect. Well, I pulled up the CSV and sure enough, it doesn't list the uh, put credit spread for the 8th of December. So this is up to date, um, but the website is not. But whatever, fine. Okay, let's, let's give them that. <laughs> so um, here is my next kind of point of confusion. Last time we checked in, the call credit spread for next Friday, the 22nd of December, we had about 500 contracts. Uh, they were slightly adding to this position. Um, well, according to this CSV file, we now have only 250 contracts. Um, so my impression is that Zega closed out some of these trades. Why would Zega close out these trades? Well, if you've been a market participant uh, this week, you probably know why. Um, we, we've had kind of a, a rip your face off rally <laughs> in the SPX. Um, yeah. So 
I'm going to go over to my spreadsheet. Um, so here's the copy and paste from SoFi's website where we see that still, I just want to point this out, and this is another um, point of cr constructive criticism I have for uh, Zega or SoFi, is um, you know most of our money is still parked in treasuries, right? 22%, 22%, 22%. Um, so less than 1% of our money is in trades. Still, I mean, the fund's been out for a month, right? Like when I made when I made my first video and I covered their first trade, I said um, that you know maybe they're just trying out the strategy, putting a feeler out, seeing how it goes. Um, but we're a month in essentially, and it's still kind of the same. So, um, yeah, that that's a little perplexing to me. Why? I guess the Zega hypo strategy or the hippo strategy has not identified those plays, has not identified trades that they think are 99% or 97%, what, you know, a high, high probability of winning. Maybe, maybe their algorithm just hasn't identified that. I mean, that's okay. Um, but you know, I guess, I guess I was expecting this fund to be a little bit more active. Um, so 250 contracts, which implies to me that, yes, they closed some of this position, and they closed it at a loss. So if we look over here, this is my my spreadsheet um, that I've made. We did have 500 contracts, so now we we have 250. I have no idea what day they closed these contracts. And if we were to close them out right now, um, if you look at the the spread between both of the call options. And I also pulled it up here for visual learners to see kind of what um, the trade looks like visually. Um, we would, we are, we're sitting at a loss on this trade. Um, we are almost down 100%. We're down about, it looks like they got a credit when they first opened the trade of 35 cents. And if we were to close this trade right now, this is not exact, but you know the 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 bid ask um, spread the the mid is about sixty two cents, so we would be losing this trade. Um, and the thing with credit spreads is, you know, you can lose a trade. I mean, sorry, it can go against your thesis of you know being bearish, uh, just not really fast. And what we've seen in the equity markets is. Uh, the S the SPX kind of just you know ripping. Um, are we going to continue to rip uh, next week? I don't know. Um, but if we do, you know this trade can really go against us pretty badly. Um, so we'll see. Uh, now let's talk about their distribution because this is why this is the catalyst for the video and this is um, kind of my biggest um, point of confusion. So it looks like the distribution is about 12 cents, right? Let's call it, you know, let's just call it 12 cents. Uh, their declaration date was yesterday, the 15th. Now, I want to point out, I didn't get, I am a SoFi user. Um, I've been a SoFi Invest customer. I've used their line of credits. I've used them for student loans. Um, Needless to say, like, you know, I love SoFi. I'm, I'm long SoFi equity. Um, I believe in their product. And they're usually very good at communicating with their customers. I didn't get an email about this declaration day. I, lo I, I searched through my email. I looked through my spam folder and everything. I, di I didn't get an email. Um, so I thought that was a little odd. I went on their social media. And, you know, I'm not going to do that for you guys on the video, but trust and believe that I looked for any kind of evidence that there was a declaration day and I couldn't find any. And if there is, and I'm incorrect, somebody pointed out to me, then, you know, I'll take the L and so if I, my bad, you know, I guess you guys are communicating with your customers, but I couldn't find anything. Now, um, let's talk about their distribution. So 12 cents, um, on the nav, let's call it, let's see, the ask is $20 and 12 cents. I did the math. It's let's just, let's just call it 7% yield. Okay. Um, based on 
the amount of the AUM they were trading, which is literally less than 1% of the AUM, honestly, I was expecting their first distribution to be a penny, if, if that. <laughs> so I'm a little confused on why this distribution is 11 cents, because I don't know where it is in the premium. Maybe my math is off. You know, I, this is not my profession. I'm just doing this for our communities. And um, if I'm doing something wrong or if I'm missing something, if I'm completely idiotic in, in my rationale and logic, let me know. I'm happy to learn and be corrected, but I couldn't find where we would get 11 cents of, of uh, premium. So my theory is that this is, you know, the first distribution and it's at the end of the year, right? Um, so this might be like a return on capital. It uh, might be... Yeah, I, I, I really don't know. So if somebody knows the answer to that, please let me know um, because, yeah. So it's about 7% yield. And, um, you know, I, I that number sounds good right to me based on this strategy. I think for anyone investing in this fund thinking it's going to pay like Kony or like Tesla or uh, Clip or anything like that, you don't understand the fund and... Um, your expectations are way too high. This is a very conservative strategy um, that will pay a lot less um, yield, which is fine, right? Like it has a place in my portfolio and it might have a place in yours. Um, so yeah, 7% sounds sounds decent to me um, for, for this strategy. Um, actually sounds really freaking great for the strategy. Um, but, uh, you know... I don't know. I'm going to keep tracking it for everyone and for my own interest. You know, I'll, I'll make videos once in a while if you if you guys are interested in that. And we'll see where it goes. So needless to say, um, <clears throat> the, the pay date will be the 19th. So next Tuesday. Now, I want to say this. I absolutely love that date. I love that it pays in the third week. I think a lot of us um, in the high yield um, investing community were looking, are looking, still actively looking for a third week uh, fund payer to fill that gap. Some of us want the weekly income. Some of us want to, uh, you know, compound and drip our distributions into the next fund on the X date. You know, there's multiple strategies uh, with this investing strategy, but we're looking for a third week payer. And if they're going to pay third week, that's the best news for me as far as their pay date. <sighs> so I don't know, guys. We'll see. I'll continue to track it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks.